Hello, it's Jennifer McGuire with twopeasinabucket.com. I'm going to show you some more ideas for using sticky back canvas, stamps, and uh, Claudine Helma Studio Paints. These are the cards I'm going to do today. They all are some sort of resist with embossing, so let me get started with them. The first one is just a basic embossed resist, and this is the card here. I'm also going to show you how to create the pillowing behind it, which is kind of hard to see in this picture, but I'll show you some others. So for this, I'm going to um, start with these studio paints. I painted a piece of sticky back canvas completely with that paint. And now I am stamping this Hero Arts Butterfly with an embossing ink. You want to press pretty firmly to try to get the ink into like the crevices of the sticky back canvas. Now this is clear embossing powder. I'm just going to shake some on and flick the back to get the extra off. You can see it there. And I like to try to keep the edges kind of frayed. So I'm going to heat it with a heat gun. And then while it's still hot, I'm going to go ahead and shake on another layer of clear embossing powder. I want this clear embossing powder to be really thick so that when we paint over it, it really runs off of the embossing. The paint runs off of the embossed area. You could also use ultra thick embossing enamel so you get a really thick embossed layer or you can just layer on um, coats of regular embossing powder like I'm doing here. So you can see I put three layers of embossing powder on here so it's nice and embossed. It just improves the, the, the look in the end. So here I'm taking a lighter shade. I used the modern red first and I'm taking the orange shade and I'm really getting my paintbrush wet with that color. You can see I'm really working it in so that I have a very watered down version of the paint. But the color will stay true because the studio paint is so nice. So you can see that embossed area just resist the, um, the paint that you're adding onto it. Now be sure you add water because this works best if you use the water. So now I'm going to heat this so and I'm just going to keep adding layers of watered down studio paint over it. Here this is the tan color because um, I wanted to lighten it up even more. So you can just play around with it however you want. If you don't like your results, you can kind of wipe it off with a baby wipe or a wet um, wet rag and just keep trying until you get results that you like. And I really like that this watered down paint kind of puddles around it and dries that way. It looks really neat. And now I always go back with a little wet rag and rub just the embossed area just to remove some of the excess paint from that so it stands out even more. And then I always like to take uh, the Distress Ink and my inking tool to the edge of the sticky back canvas just to make it um, pop even more. And here are the results. And I added some dots to the background with my white Ink Essentials pen from Ranger. Now I wanted to show you how you can make a pillow from your canvas on the front of a card just to add some interest. And you can see from the side that the canvas area is kind of pillowed on there, it kind of puffs up, which is really neat in real life. I just take a piece of paper towel and I just fold it up and I use my scissors to cut it down to be a good size to be behind the piece of canvas that I've cut. Now one thing that's nice is because this is sticky back you can put the um, piece of paper towel behind it and then press around the edges and it kind of will hold there long enough for you to get it over to your sewing machine or you know to staple it on around the edges or add brads. So you can see I'm kind of pushing it down and the sticky part around the edge will hold there long enough for you to sew it into place or add brads or use um, a stapler whatever you um, decide to do. And now that I've sewn it on I'm kind of scratching up the edges just so that it looks really nice and frayed. It adds to the home homespun feeling of it. And then here are the final results and the buttons kind of add to that feel too and then I uh, stamped and embossed with white embossing powder the greeting. Next up I'm going to show you, I'm not sure what to call this, but I called it embossed masking. It's a little bit different than the first one and here's the card. We're going to actually scratch off the embossing after we're done making it. So first I wanted to show you how I prepped the canvas for this. I put lots of different cut, um, paint onto it. First I did this modern red um, coat and then I went back with some of the pink 
and uh, mixed with water and put a coat on over it. I'm really getting a lot of paint onto this canvas and it's really nice and wet. And then if you want to change it, you can always wipe it off with a wet rag. So the canvas is real nice and wet and now I'm going to take, and then I heat dried it, of course. So here I'm going to stamp with embossing ink and put on a layer of clear embossing powder. I just did one layer here. And the reason I had to heat dry it before that is if the paint was still wet, all the embossing powder would stick to the paint. So now I'm going to go back with a, um, with a mix of water and paint, uh, the pink paint and brush over it. And you can see it's, in, it's in resisting this a little bit. And I could continue to go with this, but what I'm going to do instead is work in lots of layers of wet paint over it and rub it in. This is actually loosening the embossing powder slowly. So just keep adding more and more layers of paint and wiping it off. And I, noted, I learned this by accident when I was trying to do different things, that you can go back when this is nice and wet and scratch off the embossing powder. And it reveals the red that's trapped underneath. And it's neat because it doesn't, the butterfly is then not shiny like with the first technique I showed you. It just looks like it's part of the fabric. And then I like to go back with a wet uh, rag and rub the edges. And that actually reveals the dark color that was originally there too. So there you can see it up close. So it's nice because you get that look of the butterfly there but without the shiny res um, embossed area. Just a different, different way to do things. Now here's another one. If you don't have lots of these gorgeous paints, you can also use a sticky back canvas with Distress Ink. And that's what I did for the card here. So first I stamped the image on there with em um, embossing ink. And I embossed it with white embossing powder. I only did one layer because I wanted to have the texture on it, but you could do a few layers so you have a more solid image. I like using the white. You could use clear, but the white just pops more. And now I'm just adding lots of um, Distress Ink. I did some of the worn lipstick and now I'm doing some of the fiery brick. And You can just layer all the um, ink colors that you want on there and, it, and the white embossed area resists the Distress Ink. So there you can see the results and I added a little button to the top and put it onto a mini card. Thanks again for watching and be sure to visit uh, Two Peas in a Bucket for more information.